Recording is about to start. Yeah. Hello. Okay, let's try that again because we both have cognitive difficulties because of our disabilities and we forgot to press record. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, I'm Molly and I'm here with the lovely Mel. Um, hello. Hello. We are both members of the Disabled Student Society. We both have disabilities which is fairly self-explanatory and we just wanted to talk about disabilities really didn't we yes we did and i'll complain at society and its view of them basically yeah because it's all it's all you talk about when you're disabled all you do is talk about disabilities you don't do anything else um, what you do not. you do but um, <laughs> <laughs> but today we're actually going to talk about them um because we we've seen a few things on social media recently as well as other members of society as well um have you seen the captions on or shall I just do the transcript afterwards? I think it automatically produces a transcript. I'm not sure. I'm not team somewhere. Or I think there are apps that we can make. We if we like post this, there's apps that you can make captions for as well. I think when I did a presentation the other day, when I uploaded this to streams, the video, it then created an automatic transcript afterwards. But I suppose we can see. We'll find out. If not, I'll, I'll write one because. It's one of my favourite things is writing transcripts. I actually really enjoy it. So, um, and I'm not even being sarcastic. Anyway, um, we've all seen some things on social media, which um, they do sort of highlight people's opinions on people with um, visible and invisible disabilities and how they are perceived as potentially being less physically desirable and. You know, when you're not much to look at to begin with, that can be quite hurtful because <laughs> you need all the help you can get. And I'm not referring to Mel there at all. Um, she's beautiful. But yeah, we just kind of want to talk about that from a disabled person's perspective. And um, maybe we'll learn some things on the way. Who knows? Or maybe we'll just rant for half an hour. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's more likely. <laughs> So yeah, um, the thing that inspired me um, to ask Mel to join me and do this was um, there's a post about um, a man with Crohn's disease or a similar condition. I'm assuming it's Crohn's, but I don't know. Um, and he wore a stoma. Um, but the first picture of him, he's fully clothed. He's just looking like he's going about his whole everyday life. And um, there's a caption saying, excuse me, sir, this is the accessible toilet. And in the second picture, um, the man's just in his boxes and you can see his stoma and he's like yes thank you I'm aware um, and yeah we, we all had quite a lot to say about that a lot of us have seen it before probably a lot of other people have seen it before um, yeah yeah so. it, it's, I think personally that that is something which both in fairness, non-disabled and disabled people do. Yeah. I have seen, per personally, I've seen it myself that I think I was in a theme park or somewhere like that and a person went into a disabled toilet. I didn't think anything of it, you know, you're using the toilet fine. And some people that said to this person, excuse me, but this young girl is in a wheelchair and she's waiting to use the toilet. And then this person said, well, actually, I do have a disability. And though I never questioned it, because as far as I'm concerned, if you, you can go, I don't mind, I don't know what's wrong, well, not wrong, I shouldn't say, what condition you have, it's not my personal business. Other people automatically assume that that person wasn't disabled because unlike me, they weren't physically disabled or it wasn't visible to them. And to be honest, I think sometimes you can not, I suppose catch them out isn't the right word, but catch out people who don't have a hidden disability, don't have a physical disability, but use the toilet because it's convenient. And then as they come out and you're sat in a wheelchair, whatever you may use, and they see you, they sort of look, and then look away and then look as you say, oh, and then run away. It's quite funny, but irritating, but also quite funny because you just look at them and go, really? Yeah. I mean, I still f feel the need to apologise when I use an accessible toilet or a disabled yeah. toilet. And 
Um, I only tend to use them if I'm genuinely like, look, I'm I'm so desperate. If I don't go right now, I'm going to have an accident because um, that can happen with my condition. Um, but I've been I've had so many glares for people, not not even like to sell, it's disabled or elderly people needing to use the toilet, but from the people around them. Like, I'll say, sorry, they'll be like, it's okay, don't worry. And, you know, I've had people glaring at me um, around me. And I've just been, it's been tempting to be like, actually, I know I look like a young and well woman. But if you saw me a couple of years ago, I had a Zimmer frame and I could have walked straight into that toilet and you wouldn't have said anything. Um, but it's just like, I don't need to justify myself to the no. people that are too judgmental to think that. Well, what concerns me about it, and I said it to you before, is about we already have the hidden disability the land yard with the sunflowers. This is a tool that's been taken away from us because of the pandemic and it's difficult enough to manage. But then do we need another land yard to show that we have a hidden disability, but we can use a toilet? Do we need another land yard to show that we can access a train? Do we need to be carrying around different things? And I've seen some people in the society were even suggesting, oh, well, a dis disability ID card is a good idea. And to me personally, with things like this, it's not a good idea because why should we as disabled people, as equal citizens in this country, have to carry something to say we are disabled and that we should have access to the exact same things as anybody else, or in this case, a disability so why should we have to provide a card or lanyard just so people don't glare to say yes I am disabled yeah I know what you mean I do and does that gentleman I was talking about with the stomo have to walk around in his underwear so people are aware that he is disabled and he needs to use a disabled toilet and of course he, that's just ridiculous why would you ever ask him to do that and he shouldn't have to like it shouldn't be a question of that and it's not really down to anybody to judge who is and who is not disabled it's not really necessary I don't really see why it is necessary in no. most circumstances I don't think it should be necessary at all and I think even with some disabled people willingly perhaps wanting to get these ID cards though I understand it through frustration you are playing into the stigma by getting a card because then that means that the people who don't want these cards or then have to get one because suddenly people go well they can get one why don't you get one and suddenly we all have to become these people carrying around proof to show that we are disabled and we shouldn't have to provide proof society no. shouldn't be forcing people to feel so uncomfortable that they feel the need to want to provide proof of something you shouldn't have to in the first place i, I would happily i would happily get a card because to me it's I mean I actually used to have these cards um I lost them um yeah. from the MS Society um with a list of things and there was one where it said I need to use the toilet urgently please can you help me in different languages in case I was traveling um and there was another one where it's like I I can't see I can't verbalize right now all sorts of things like that I need your help please can you help me um, the same with medical ID bracelets. Like I wear medical ID bracelets, and uh, my sister does for different conditions. To me, having a card is no different for that. But I just don't see why there's this obligation. Like, oh, it's your job to inform us that actually you are disabled because it's almost again. It's like if you talk about your disability too much, you're fishing for attention. And then if you don't mention it, and then suddenly like you know, oh yeah, actually I I have this disability. People are like, oh, why why do you never talk about it? Like why have you why have I only just found that out? And then they're offended yeah. because you haven't told them. You just <laughs> it's it's a difficult one to to navigate. Exactly, you can't exactly balance that out. And then I don't. Per, <laughs> it's difficult because you don't want to start a conversation about hi, my name's Mel. I study this, and, and then and people I say, oh yeah, why well, have cerebral palsy? And then some people feel like, oh, well, if you feel the need to mention your disability, but then if I don't mention it to you, you're going to stand around awkwardly for a long time, perhaps even a few meetings later, and then say to me, oh, well, what, what do you actually have? It's difficult to manage 
communication really it's difficult to know where that balance is when can i discuss my disability is it only when it's appropriate for you and when you feel like i can discuss it yeah i've had that before like i'm very much an open book and i'm just like i used to be like i'm just gonna it's, i'm just gonna bring it up i'm gonna try and make it fairly natural when i bring it up but i'll try and do it sooner rather than later because i don't want there to be any nasty surprises later on Mm. Uh, for example, in the workplace, it's very much yes. I have I have multiple sclerosis. These are the things I find difficult because um, I don't want them to think that I'm withholding information from them. They're my employer. They're my colleagues. They're whoever. Um, and again, like if I'm making friends with people, that's quite an important thing for me to want them to know because if something happened, it's it's fairly unlikely to. But if it did, I kind of want them to have thought okay so she's someone I care about um I'm going to do a little bit of reading I don't expect people to have like a PhD in neurology or anything because that's ridiculous but you know just a little bit of background reading if they want to I'm not going to force everyone to say oh yeah if you were my friend you should have done this but if they want to they can and they can find that out if they want to and then that way as well they know it's a very natural thing to me um you're quite the same you're very much sort of well, it is what it is. Um, you know, you can, you know, you can ask me questions about my condition. I can ask you questions about your condition because we're friends and we're open about that. But it's very hard to get it right. And again, as I said earlier, it's almost like um, it can it can make you seem less desirable for some people if you have a disability. Like um, if we're saying we just pretend that I'm this like beautiful woman I'm like a supermodel and people could be like uh -huh. yes <laughs> I say pretend it's quite a lot of imagination but uh, <laughs> my sister's here and she's laughing at me um it was like, oh it's such a shame though that she's got that condition you know oh, it's such a shame that she's so pretty but she's got this condition and that's nothing anyone's ever said to me but um that's probably because I'm not pretty but um um yeah it's um it's like people use it's such it's automatically a bad thing like oh i'd really i'd be really interested in them but they're in a wheelchair or but they you know walk funny i don't know what it is like some people that's an automatic no mm. um as well <laughs> oh yeah that happens yeah it does we did our dating article do you remember that our problems with dating when we're disabled oh, oh i remember yeah but, i was shocked um... by that Oh yeah, it's awful. It really is. I remember. Oh, this is all. I had one date, and I've been talking. To, um, my friend introduced me to online dating. She said, "Well, you know, if you're not maybe you don't really connect with people around here, maybe if you do online dating, you might be able to meet someone new. It'd be all different." Okay, joined online dating. You know, tried a few people, and, and now I don't really get on with you. Um, sometimes, you know, I'd say quite upfront, I'm disabled, I have cerebral palsy. At the time I used a mobility scooter, I'd say I use a mobility scooter, I can't walk far, you know, and I'd say this is why. And people would automatically stop talking to me because of it. And I thought, well, you know, there are people in the world like this, you just move on, you move forward. Anyway, this one person was talking to me for a while, I thought, oh, this is great, this is going well. They asked could they meet up with me, I said okay, you know, fine, and they met up in a public place, all very safe and whatever, and he turned up and he took one look at me and I'm in my mobility scooter, I'm nervous anyway because I have anxiety anyway and I'm thinking oh god, this guy turns up and he smiles and then he sees me and he goes, oh. No way. Mm, um, I, oh, oh, okay, let's just pretend that didn't happen, maybe he's nervous too. So I did everything, sat down, started talking and whatever. And then he's like, well, the thing is, I, I don't want to continue. But I was like, OK, fine. Why? Just fair enough. You know, he said it to my face. And he goes, well, the thing is, I don't know if you can do stuff like a real woman could. No. And I was like, I don't understand what you mean, because I was, I was just a bit shocked. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, no one's ever said this to me before. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, because of the way you are and your disability, you don't know if you could do things. And to be honest, as well, you didn't even mention you were disabled. And I went, I did. I always say up front that I'm disabled. I always say what condition I have up front so that people know 
not uncomfortable. And he, I said, why? And he's like, oh, well, if I knew you were like that, I wouldn't. And stopped. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is exactly what I was trying to guess at. Like, oh, you would have been lovely and, if it weren't for this. And that's it's our right. obligation to make everybody else aware. Um, yeah, it was so frustrating because I know that I always tell people anyway, and I thought, well, you obviously liked me somehow, so why did this suddenly make a difference? Why should it make a big difference or an impact? It didn't bother you when you supposedly didn't know, and then you turn up and tell me that you don't, I'm not a real woman because I'm disabled. Yeah, like, I mean, I can understand it being a surprise and in, in if we're looking at it statistically like one in four people have a long-term um long-term health condition like physical health condition um so you know statistically that means three quarters of people don't and you yeah. fit into that other quarter but you know you did tell him and as you said if he was interested in you anyway it should be like okay i'm gonna at least try and adjust to this not respond yeah. like that and it's or just... even if he had said, you know, I don't want to see you, and then it was, it would have been, you know, fine, that's fine, because it sometimes don't work out, that's absolutely fine, but he could have picked a bit of a nicer way to say it. And then, like you were saying before, about people saying that, oh, she would have been such a pretty girl if she wasn't in a wheelchair or something. Somebody, a few months ago, actually, they said to me, they went, oh, well, you will never be able to date a boy if you keep on dragging that contraption around. As long as you need that, nobody will ever want to date you because of our walking frame. You should ditch that. And I said, but I can't just ditch it because I have to repose it. I can't walk without it. And like, oh, well, you know, it would have made a really nice girl for someone if you didn't use those sort of things and if you just tried harder. And <laughs> It's just so frustrating. You know what's frustrating me about hearing this is, um, you know, some sometimes it is the case that people can't do things the same way. I know what he's referring to yeah. uh, when they have a physical disability. However, in a lot of cases, it's not. And he didn't even ask. Exactly. You know, if, he'd, if, he, if it's a big thing for him in a relationship. Yeah. And you weren't capable of that. That's so, you know, I suppose that's fair enough. But yeah. he didn't even ask. At least ask first. At least ask. And, you know, people are allowed to find able-bodied people more attractive than disabled people. They are. Absolutely. You know, I'm not going to say I'm they're not that. because that makes us out to be like we're some sort of heroes we deserve to put on a pedestal. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day... Um, beauty is more than just skin deep and um, beauty is more than just how well someone can walk without a contraption you know when I when I had a Zimmer frame I, I just I, I used I saw it as an extra limb I, I used to just own it um, I tried to make jokes about it <laughs> I'd make jokes about like look how sexy I look right now um but but you know like different people deal with things different ways and i can understand why a man would look at me i'm 22 now and if i did need a zimmer frame still or needed one again i'd understand why they would look at me and think yes maybe i don't want to date this woman but at the end of the day i think to shut someone down straight away because of that and it's like yeah. again like you know people say you're a pretty girl because you are it's almost like, how dare you be disabled? Because, you know, how, how dare you have the audacity to be pretty and disabled? Because so many people would want you if you weren't. And, you know, yeah. it's like you're being inconsiderate here. <laughs> but this isn't a choice that you have. I know, it's just, it's so frustrating. And, I mean, when we did that dating article, I was just disgusted by some of the things that people do and um it, i think i think as well when for pet if we live with our parents or maybe carers or the people who are close to us siblings or whatever, it's also very difficult for them because you know they want people to treat us as people which all anybody would want really but yeah. i think as well they want they find it difficult because they don't know how to respond, especially when they're not disabled themselves. They don't really know how to respond to the experience 
experiences you have. And I think yeah, that's quite difficult for people when you don't have other disabled family members, when you're the only disabled person in the family, it's difficult for them to understand until you do come back with these stories and you're upset and you tell them these things. And I think, I don't, I don't know, I, I just, when you go through the internet and you read some of the disability dating stories and you, you just think, why? And then you think, well, maybe I actually did a good job by not getting that one. That was a good idea. I have to say my disability is one of many reasons why I've never tried online dating. And I don't think I ever will. Um, it's, it's like, for me, it feels like an elephant in the room. When do I bring this up? Because yeah. it's not going anywhere. And I don't know when it's going to show up again I don't know when I'm going to get sick again if I'm going to get sick again um my sister just bought pineapple thank you uh, <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how it's going to present itself like smiley, yeah. smiley face of pineapple but um it's like when are you going to bring that up and I I wouldn't be able to handle constant rejections because of it even though I'd understand yeah but it would really hurt my feelings I think I think that's what was most difficult for me, but most especially is that when I made the profile, when I made it, you know, I put like my age and like that I was British because this happened in Canada, uh, but I didn't put I was disabled. I thought, you know, if someone is interested in me, I want them to click on my profile and I want them to talk to me first and then I will say, yeah, you know, I'm disabled. I didn't want to put it in the profile because I felt uncomfortable that some people might take advantage if they see that straight away. Yeah, we had a talk, do you remember, where we wrote an article actually about um, dating as a whole society. Yeah. And um, we had someone say, well, we had a few people say that they put a little disabled icon in their, their bio. And that, that does make an awful lot of sense, but I can also understand why people wouldn't want to do that. And I think, again, um, it's a case of... I go on about the saviour's complex quite a lot. It's like people want to be like, look at me, I've got a disabled girlfriend or I've got a disabled boyfriend, whoever it is. Yeah. Um, I, I'm so great because I'm going out with them even though they're disabled. It's, yeah. like, it's like, no, we don't We don't need that sort of attitude. Yeah, I don't understand sort of attitude, but I think, especially, I don't know, I found that, when a disabled person is attracted to another disabled person or they just have a similar condition and they're not even attracted to each other people are like oh you look so cute together with your matching mobility aids and it's all i don't i don't understand that where do you get this mentality that because i'm disabled i have to a automatically be attracted to another disabled person, person with a similar condition and B, that I can't actually be attracted to able-bodied people because there is a similar condition. A person has a similar condition. I have to be attracted to that person. And at the time, I was. And then, you know, we'd go on dates together and people were like, oh, look how cute that is. Oh, look how sad that is. It is yeah. It, it's so frustrating. You think as a society that you just sort of, not even blink we're in the 21st century we're not living in 1970 anymore people <laughs> yeah. like you know two 21 year olds with a zimmer phones can just go out and enjoy an ice cream together right but i know yeah. so tragic so tragic apparently and it's like that other one oh my gosh that one i showed you yesterday and i did actually find that one on reddit <sighs> Um, on the nice guys subreddit, which is um, is a very sat um, satirical use of the term nice guys. Um, this, if you're, you know, you know, yeah, the nice one. guy. Um, the one, and it said something along the lines of a disabled woman can get married to an able bodied guy. But I'm a smart. Yeah. Yep, but, but then I'm I can't a smart, even. Able bodied guy. Yeah. No, but I can't then. Kill. What was the other bit? And then he said, but I'm an able-bodied guy and I can't even get into a relationship. 
it's like yeah again it's like oh my gosh you know we should be thankful that anyone would possibly want us yeah. like mm-hmm. when i read that the first thing i said to myself out loud was i wonder why yeah basically <laughs> because that as we say, your beauty is not just skin deep, and he might be able bodied, like, good for him, congratulations, it must be great. But, you know, you've yeah. got a really ugly personality yeah. if you're using the yeah. fact that people are in love and you're not, regardless <laughs> of whether they're disabled or not, against you. It's just so disgusting. Exactly. I really don't un- understand this stigma around disabled people dating and having relationships and just generally enjoying a normal life like anybody else and as exactly as we're entitled to like anybody else and it just gets so frustrating and and i think as well as we were saying before like you said that you know you tell your you tell your friends about your disability and then they can go away if they want to and learn about that disability and you know that's perfectly fine and that's what i do too but some people just expect to be taught about disability and that we have to be the teachers, that they can't actually go and learn something themselves, that we have to go through the life teaching people. Mm. I've had people tell me that I'm too heavy if I bring it up too soon. And I get that, but again, it's, it's, it's like with you and your dating experience, it's like when is the right time to bring that up? It's going to be different for everybody. Like, some people wouldn't blink if I was like, hello, I'm Molly, I'm 22 years old, I've got a personality disorder and I've got multiple sclerosis. Some people wouldn't blink if you said the same about yourself and cerebral palsy. But then other people would be like, wait, okay, whoa, that was way too much to take in. I'm going to avoid that one. She's crazy. And so I don't know. It, it, it tends to just filter its way out now. Like if someone said to me, hey, do you have a mess? I'd be like, yes. I don't really... I'm not ever going to pretend I don't, but I don't like wear it as a badge of honour anymore. Like it's it's just a thing. It's it's there. Um, it's it's as I say, it's not leaving. But it just it is hard to think that a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh yeah, I would date her, but like, yeah, what about her MS? Yeah, at this point, I'm just like, yes, I have cerebral palsy. Mm, I'm not bothered. However, when I did see a tweet on the internet which said about disabled people treat their conditions as badges of honour and that they're just, I can't remember the exact phrase, there was something about that they whine about their conditions and they're idiots for wanting to get vaccines and they should just get over it. <laughs> yeah, and Mal actually wrote a really, really good article about that, so... Um, I did, very so angry. Read it. Uh, <laughs> yeah it was a really good article actually I really enjoyed reading that one um, but yeah the thing is like we do go through a lot of 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 difficult experiences you know we're often we're in a lot of pain we face a lot of prejudice you know we're just asking for respect in return it's really not it's really not too much to ask you know so, some disabled people yes some people do use it for attention so people do use it as a badge of honor if you want to but if that's their way of dealing with it like i wouldn't stop them but i don't know <laughs> Maybe no, I'm so it, thinking it's that me way. either i think people just cope with things the way they do really that everybody copes with things differently and that I don't think giving disabled people respect should be something that we have to take a bit of it and be grateful for it. Everybody is deserving of respect. And it's not something that you should have to go through life fighting for people to give you respect and not being a, for example, today, I walk down the road, no issues. I walk past two people, they didn't say a word, don't know them. They see my walking frame, one of them, I feel eyes on the back of my head as I'm walking away. Nothing. Turns around, they've turned around to look at me and staring at me. And it's just little things like that that I wouldn't do it to a non disabled person. So why do it to me? Or why do it to another disabled person? Yeah. We're all deserving of respect as people. And our experiences are what make us 
into the people we are. Absolutely. And if we continue to have negative experiences within society, we are going to become more isolated and that's just going to increase the problems that we have if we're not seen out in public people aren't going to educate themselves and not going to learn to just be around as able people as people and yeah it's a I agree with difficult that. thing to balance and until we learn to balance it as a society we are not going to be treated as equals yeah i agree with that We've been talking for about an hour now. <laughs> Not quite an hour, but like a long time. Have you got any like takeaway oh, yeah. messages? That, I think my neighbour's home. Any takeaway messages that you want to sort of conclude with? Uh, be nice to disabled people. Be nice to everybody regardless. Don't stare at people on the road. Please wear a mask. Please. And also read our website. Our website is very good. And it's had lots of shares and lots of likes all over Twitter. And everybody loves it. Yes, um, read Mel's articles because Mel writes some very good ones. Um, if you do want to learn more about cerebral palsy or MS, we've got articles on them as well. Um, we've got we've got articles writing letters to our former selves, telling us how life basically turns out, and we've got information about prejudice. We've got information about um, what it's like to live with with fatigue, with disabilities. Um, I think, yeah, my, my takeaway message would be, it's a real cliche, but you, you never know what someone's going through. And that definitely also applies for disabilities. Like, um, you might see someone in a wheelchair and you might think, OK, they can't walk. Or you, you might see that, but you might not see the, the trauma that caused that. You might not see the condition that they're living with and the pain that they might be in as well um and like with that guy i keep talking about with the stoma that someone might look perfectly fine and not be so i think that would be my takeaway message is, is don't ju judge a book by its cover and don't assume that you know everything about someone because you probably don't um yeah but this has been this has been really interesting and um, thank you for being bonkers enough to do this with me and thank you for asking there's nobody else that is on the same level as crazy as me that would talk to me for this long. <laughs> so thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll leave you yeah, well. to enjoy your evening and I'll enjoy my pineapple. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice thank day. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Bye. Bye.